Okay, welcome everybody. I believe, let me just mute YouTube here. Check the microphone. Start screaming at me if you don't hear me, but I believe we are set up and we are live. Last time I did this, I kept getting these pop-ups. So if I look a little flustered, I tested it. You guys can't see it on your end. So it just sticks this big window in front of me and it uh, kind of bothers me, but um, yeah, it looks like the chat's up and running. So thank you everybody for joining us today. It is Volatility Barometer episode 33 and pretty wild day. It's actually a little early in the week for us. Typically we do them Thursday, Friday, you know, so if you're new here, thank you for joining us. You can come back, live streams every week. We talk about all kinds of stuff here, but certainly volatility and option specific stuff. So, but today is kind of an emergency meeting because the VXX is going absolutely wild. And uh, it's, it's, it's been pretty crazy. It's been fun. I don't have a position on, so I can say that, but for anybody who has lost money, unfortunately, it's not much fun for you. Anybody who's made money, congratulations. But this is a pretty big event. It doesn't happen often, so uh, we're certainly gonna need to talk about it. And so hopefully you've got all your coffee ready. Like I said on Twitter, bourbon's fine too. I should probably be drinking for this as well, to be honest. This is a pretty historic day, but lot to get to. So kind of want to make sure I touch all the bases. I'll take one for the team today and do this sober, but you guys feel free to open a bottle of something. So wait for a few more people to come in. I'm actually going to do the housekeeping. I'll just run a little intro now while people are coming in. And then of course, a lot to get to. I'll, uh, I'll do the rundown and then we'll get started. So Thank you so much for joining me here today. I really do appreciate the support. So my name's Brent Osachoff. I'm a Canadian and I'm a former professional golfer. So you will hear the odd golf analogy slipped in there from time to time. I run, I love movies, diehard UFC fan, and I do love to travel. So you'll see this background change throughout the year. So just give me one minute here to do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. If you do feel like you need a little more structure in your investing, I do also manage a private investing community with members from over 65 countries around the world. And it's all centered around both of our diversified portfolios. You can choose the one that best suits your personal level of risk tolerance. There's a daily email sent out every morning with a ton of very useful volatility metrics at the top, which you can learn more about each one of them and start applying them to your own trading. There's a daily article or video where I break down some of the most requested topics from members. And then most importantly, of course, in every email, every day, I state exactly what position each of my strategies will be in, along with all the allocation sizing and risk management that goes with them. I've made it easy to follow so you can get the same consistent performance the VTS community has enjoyed for over nine years now. No obligation, but if this is something you may be interested in, go to volatilitytradingstrategies.com, click the subscribe tab, and the monthly subscription does come with a free two-week trial so you can check it all out before committing. Thanks again for supporting the YouTube channel and spending a little bit of time with me here today. So let's get on with the show. Okay, so welcome everybody. Volatility Barometer, episode 33. Let's do this. I see there's a lot of comments. Of course, we will get to those. We've got a little rundown here. Um, since we do live streams every week, I'm sure there's some of you in the comment section who are thinking this is just a run-of-the-mill live stream. And so I haven't looked at the chat section yet, but I would imagine there's quite a few people yelling at me. Have you seen what happened to the VXX? Have you seen what happened? What's going on? They just think I'm doing a regular topic today. So let me first address the elephant in the room before we even get to this breakdown, because I actually haven't looked at it in, um, in about an hour. So let's, let's see where we're at with this thing, first of all. So here's the VXX. It is up currently 16.14%. And what we're all here for, of course, is essentially, for anybody who trades volatility ETPs, you will know that the VXX is an ETN and the VIXY is an ETF. They are 99.9% .9 of the time structurally identical. So this is why we're all here. You can see the elephant in the room over here. There is a massive divergence happening in the VXX. And no, this is not normal. So if you're in the comments and you're wondering what's going on, it's not normal. But I will also say, we're gonna do a full presentation here, but I will also say it's not necessarily manipulation. It's not necessarily nefarious. We'll get to all the reasons why, 
but essentially the reason why I want to do this live stream and why it's kind of an emergency one today, wasn't planning on doing this, but every single time in the volatility space, something breaks or something happens, there's a apocalypse event or there's some crazy market action. They happen, they tend not to repeat exactly the same, but there's always another crisis around the corner. And whenever they happen, my email fills up. I know I've, we've got a lot of people who also, you know, in the volatility space, trying to help people about these products, their email inbox fills up. People lose money all the time on these products. And I, I'm not gonna say that's fine if you lose money, but if you know what you're doing and you lose money, that's fine. It's fair game. We're all traders and I've had many, many losing trades in the past. So we all do it. But I think it's a real shame when people lose money because they don't know how something works or they got into a trade and they didn't really know what to expect. Some bank out there rug pulls or something like that and d does something unexpected and they, they lose a bunch of money. So hopefully at the end of today, I'm just going to do about a 20 minute presentation here. Hopefully at the end of that, you're going to understand what the VXX is. Hopefully you'll understand what Barclays has done and why it is causing the price movements. Because, I mean, I could give people the short answer. I could say that Barclays has stopped issuing new shares. But anybody who doesn't know what that means or how VXX functions, they'll say, okay, great, but why is it going up? And I'll say, well, it's because they're not issuing new shares. Okay, awesome, but how come VXX is spiking? Unless you actually know what VXX is, that's, that explanation is not going to mean anything to anybody. So no math, no complicated stuff. I, I like to do everything as simple as possible, but we do have to kind of understand what VXX is in order to prepare you for what could be a lot of fun going forward. I mean, I'm not going to be here telling people not to trade this. I will be the voice of reason and tell everybody to be defined risk and be very careful and keep it very low. Of course, I'll do that. I'm a conservative investor. But if you want to jump in and, and have some fun with this, it's going to be quite exciting over the next few weeks. So I just want you to know what it is. So first of all, of course, we'll talk about why it's broken, do the Barclays announcement, how VXX works. I know it might put a few of you to sleep. I'll keep it short, hopefully five, 10 minutes. I tend to ramble. Um, you'll hear things about NAV, in indicative values, authorized participants. We're going to talk about all of that. You've probably been all over social media. You've heard those words, those things being thrown around. I'm just going to tell you what they are. And then we'll talk about the good stuff. How does it affect UVXY? Will this affect our options trades if you are trading options on this? Is there arbitrage trades? I know the comment section is going to light up on, hey, should we do this trade? Should we buy VXX and short VIXY against it and do pairs trading? We're going to talk about that too. So, of course, then, of course, tune in to the end for the live open Q&A. Ask me anything you want. And I'm just glancing at this chat here. There's already a bunch, so we'll probably not get to them all. I have no problem coming back Thursday, Friday. We can do overtime sessions if we need. But uh, the first thing that I want to talk about, of course, let's get to the actual announcement. We'll just explain what it is. If you haven't seen this, we'll go over it real quick. So Barclays, the bank essentially that manages the iPath ETNs here that we're talking about, says here, Barclays Bank PLC announced today that it has suspended until further notice any further sales from inventory and any further issuances of each of the iPath pure beta crude oil ETNs, which we're not going to talk about, but pretty much everything I say today can apply equally to that as well. And then the iPath Series B short-term VIX futures ETN, the one we're all interested in, the VXX. In each case effective as of the open of trading on Monday, so this has already happened, March 14th, this suspension may cause fluctuations in the trading value of such ETNs. Yeah, no kidding. Daily redemptions at the option of holders of the ETNs will not be affected by this suspension. Okay, it's announcements like this are intentionally vague, so if you're a little lost, don't worry. I don't think this was meant to clear anything up. They could have done a far better job, but... They say here, this suspension is being imposed by Barclays be because Barclays does not currently have sufficient issuance capacity to support further sales from inventory and any further issuances of the ETNs. So quite vague there. And again, intentionally so. They don't actually share a whole lot of information, even on the best of times when everything's functioning normally. They don't tend to reveal too much about their behind the scenes hedging and whatnot. So Super vague, but they are clear to say 
These actions are not the result of the crisis in Ukraine or any issue with the market dynamics in the underlying index components. Now, the underlying index components we'll get into in a minute, they're basically talking about the VIX futures. This has nothing to do with the volatility markets being broken in any way. They are functioning normally. This is not the crisis in, our, in the Ukraine. This is just something internal with Barclays. Barclays expects to reopen sales and issuances of the ETNs as soon as it can accommodate additional capacity for future issuances. So that's pretty much it. The rest is just kind of, I'll, I'll highlight one thing at the bottom later on, but um, that's pretty much it. So pretty vague, intentionally vague, but um, I guess the first question it begs the question. People are going to be wondering, what does that mean and why did they do this? And the truth is, we don't know. Like I said, they don't share a whole lot of information and I will give full disclosure, I've never built an ETF before, I've never managed an ETF, never worked for anybody who did that. So, um, you know, I'm not super versed on the regulatory environment and I'm not a compliance officer or anything, but if I had to take my best guess, and people will probably want me to guess, this has happened in the past. It happens on different things. It happens on oil and gas, natural gas. It happened on TVIX. The last time that it happened on TVIX, the reason was because the capacity of the fund got a little bit too large and they had rules in place that it couldn't grow too quickly. So they did this suspension of the share creation. This time around, I don't see anything in the market that really strikes me as that. There's been plenty of periods in the past where they should definitely be able to handle this. So it's not that. I've been thinking about it a little bit. And again, I'm not, a, not on the compliance side, but my best guess is two things. One could have just been a legitimate error. It could have been something really stupid, like maybe they just, you know, didn't issue enough shares or they, they didn't file something correctly or they didn't, you know, you know, something bounced back and they, they were in a little bit of a panic behind the scenes and they had to shut it down quickly. And if that's the case, it'll probably start fairly soon. They'll probably work that out in a day or two. That's not my best guess though. What I actually think would happen is we'll get into in a minute ETNs versus ETFs, but ETNs have to do a lot of extra hedging behind the scenes. And I suspect that's what it is. I suspect they had an issue lining up all their hedges at the correct premiums. Of course, everything's price sensitive, so hedges are available. It's just whether they were going to be taking on hedges that guarantee losses at the fund, they probably don't want to do that. So I suspect that's what it is. But if your comments are something to do with why they did this, Let's leave the why. It's happening. Let's leave the why out. Let's just try to figure out the what. So it is happening. Why is it happening? First of all, this is the boring part. Don't fall asleep. This will be quick. But we have to actually talk about what VXX is. So like I said, VXX is an ETN, not an ETF. Basic difference here is that an ETF, exchange traded fund, like the VIXY, is it's a fund, and essentially that means that the assets are being held by, by the fund. So in this case, the, VX, the VIXY is actually holding the VIX futures, and that makes it on the asset side. A v, an ETN, an exchange-traded note, is essentially a liability. It's a debt obligation. You can view it as sort of an IOU by the bank to make sure that they square up with you at, a, at the designated price, and they're doing a bunch of management and hedging behind the scenes to make sure that all happens. But, it, but it's important to know that there is some stuff going on back there because they're not actually holding the underlying futures. It is a debt obligation. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time, this is not going to matter. I know a lot of people think, oh, that's shady. Don't ever trade ETNs. I don't know. I mean, you could look at it that way if you wanted, but honestly, 99.9% .9 of the time, the VXX tracks the VIXY virtually perfectly. They're structurally identical and everything is fine. There are two things with ETNs, of course, that people have to be aware of. The first is, like I said, there is a, a little bit of action behind the scenes with regards to hedging and whatnot. But, and the other thing, of course, is the credit risk of the issuing bank. I, again, I'm guessing I'd be shocked if that's what's going on here, but stranger things have happened. You just have to know that if you're trading an ETN because it's a debt obligation, you are actually subject to the solvency of the bank that is issuing the ETN. So keep that in mind. If, for example, you were holding the VXX and for some reason the bank went, you know, bankrupt, you'd have a little bit of a problem on your hands. So 
ETN versus ETF, important to note, but mainly what I want to drive home here is how this actually functions and why halting shares is such a big deal. So the VXX derives its price entirely, I should have bolded that, entirely off the VIX futures expiration cycles. Not the VIX. You see that a lot. People are saying, what's well, not tracking the VIX? The VIX was up 3%. The VXX was down 2 What's going on? It's not designed to track the VIX. It has nothing to do with the S&P 500. The VXX tracks the VIX futures, more specifically the front two-month VIX futures. So this website is VIXcentral.com. If you don't have it bookmarked, make sure you get it. This is every vol trader's website. Probably check it every day. VIXtrader.com. Oh, sorry, I was VIXtrader.com in 2008, my old website. VIXcentral.com. Hopefully I didn't say that a few times. So essentially what's happening, there are a few products still that trade the M4 to M7, the middle of the curve here. A couple of long ones, VIXM, VXZ. But mainly all the, na the name volatility ETPs, VXX, UVXY, SVXY, they're all trading the front two-month futures. And this is quite simple. If, if you want a sort of a 20, I don't know how long this is, Let, give me a second. If you go to the actual YouTube channel and go to this search function, you can type in VIX futures and there should be this one here. This one's fine too. It's just older. I kind of remade it a year ago, but watch this one, VIX futures expiration. It's going to give you exactly presentation on what's going on with those VIX futures. But essentially the, the really quick version is Conveniently, today is the first day of the new cycle. Now, I guess I should do a little side tangent here as well. Sorry, bouncing around, but that struck me as important. So if you're wondering why the VIX futures expired on Tuesday, which almost never happens, the VIX futures expire the third Wednesday of every month. But it's not actually the third Wednesday. The way that it works is the VIX futures expire 30 days before the next cycle's S&P 500 options expire on that Friday, 30 days from now. But because April 15th, 30 days from now, is Good Friday and it's a holiday, they're going to drag that back a day. That's going to make the VIX futures expire a day earlier. So normally it would have been tomorrow, but today the VIX futures are actually expiring. Not totally unheard of. It's just if there's a holiday, then that's what happens. But if you were wondering, hey, what's going on? Why did the M1 drop off the board on Tuesday? That's weird. That's why. So anyway... Today is the first day of the cycle. VXX and VIXY are holding 100%. Sorry, someone calling me. Sorry about that. Got distracted. Uh, VXX is holding 100% of that front month M1 contract and 0% of the M2 contract. So every day that goes by, you can see there's 34 days in this cycle. Every day that goes by, they're going to sell a little bit of the front month and they're going to buy a little bit of the back month. And this is going to happen in equal increments right up until that expiration. And on expiration day, the VXX will be holding 100% of the back month future, which is M2 for that day, and 0% of the front month M1. M1 grows off the board, it expires, M2 becomes M1, and the whole cycle starts again. So it's very important for people to understand that just this is where VXX is getting its pricing. It is not based on supply and demand. Now, I say in quotation marks here, normally, supply and demand is irrelevant. VX30 goes up or down, it changes the nav. These are just bullet points for me, so I don't forget anything. It's more for me than it is for you guys. But point is, you can actually track exactly what this should be doing based only on these futures. So again, if we open the VXX, we get rid of that, and we look here, this is March 7th. March 8th, it went down. March 9th, it went down. March 10th, it went down. If you want to know why, you don't have to look to the VIX index. That's not it. You don't have to look at the S&P and what happened there. That's not it. You don't have to look at the volume of the VXX being traded. That has nothing to do with it. All it is, very simply, is the movement of these VIX futures. I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is March 7th. These are the futures. On this VIX Central website, you just click multiple dates go March 8th. Remember, it went down three days in a row. So there we go. VIX futures dropped. That means the VXX dropped. Has to. Go to the March 9th. No matter what the VIX does or the S&P does or 500,000 people buy this thing, it doesn't matter. It went down, so the VXX went down. If you go to the 10th, this goes down again, so the VXX went down three days in a row. 
That has to happen. But then it reversed and went up two days. We're going to ignore the last day because that's just share issuance voodoo. But um, if you want to see why it went up the last two days, it's the same reason. It is pricing exactly off these VIX futures. This is what's happening. And I'm kind of harping on this point because it's important. You can see how it went up the last two days. That's why the VXX moved. It's because it's tracking an index. There's an actual methodology underneath the VXX. It's this index, the SPVIX STR index. You can bookmark this if you want. Hopefully on the live stream, you can see that web address. But if you can't, just type in SPVIX STR, you're going to get it. But essentially, this is the short-term VIX futures e index. Exactly like I said, pricing the next two near-term futures, replicating a position that rolls the nearest month future to the next month on a daily basis in equal fractional amounts. This results in a constant one-month rolling long position in first and second month contracts. Very wordy for basically what I said. The VXX is tracking whatever's going on here. Basically, the midpoint taking into account the days to expiration. That is what is happening. So why is that important? Well, because if it tracks an index and it has an actual value that it is supposed to be, a lot of people are going to look at that and say, okay, great, I understand there's a methodology there, but still, if a bunch of people go in and buy and sell this product, surely that's going to affect its price, right? And it would if it was Apple stock. A whole bunch of people buy or sell Apple stock, that is obviously going to affect the price. That is directly how it is priced, but not VXX. And this is where people often get thrown off. They, they don't quite understand this last step because it's happening behind the scenes and nobody really talks about it. Nobody really knows about it. But essentially what is happening is because the VXX is supposed to track an underlying indicative value, an intraday indicative value. So you might see it IIV, you might see it just IV. In fact, you can just check it for yourself at any time. You can just go on to even Yahoo Finance, right? If you ever wanna see, first type in VXX, right? This is the price of VXX at 34.56. If you just go in and do VXX-IV, this is the indicative value, 2634. So there's a massive difference there between what the VXX is trading and what the indicative value is trading. If you look at it in a trading software, this is thinkorswim for anybody wondering, VXX minus VXX dot IV. In TOS, it's a dot. On Yahoo Finance, it's a dash. But if you see what's happening, this is totally normal. The nav of the VXX under normal functioning, literally going back as far as you can go, is just baseline zero. It's tracking the indicative value, not perfectly. It is a freely traded ETN, right? There is an open market here and these are people buying and selling it. But there's a mechanism involved to get this thing to flatline like that. And that's where the authorized participants come in. Authorized participants being, you know, people who are essentially helping the VXX and all the volatility ETNs, and to be honest, all the ETFs and ETNs out there. The SPY has an indicative value. They all do. What the authorized participants are doing is anytime there's a gap between the indicative value and the NAV value because of the buying and selling of the product, it might happen quickly, they're actually really strongly financially incentivized to go in and close that gap. And what happens is Barclays, the issuing bank, can issue shares, they can create or redeem shares, and that is marked to the indicative value. So if there's a gap between the indicative value and the NAV value, because Barclays can match those prices, the authorized participants actually have an arbitrage opportunity there. They can come in and collect their money. And this isn't one of those things where it's a, it's a regulatory thing and there's a bunch of people managing it and maybe they'll get around to it or maybe they'll forget about it and it'll kind of go haywire for a couple of days. They really do get paid quite well for this. So that's why it has flatlined so consistently. This is a very smooth functioning product. That's why I said at the outset of this live stream, I know it sounds nefarious and it sounds like these are banks manipulating and believe me, I am no fan of Wall Street. I, I get it. I, 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 it drives me crazy when all the things behind the scenes are happening that are taking advantage of people. 
But this isn't really one of them. And to be honest, this has been happening for so long, so normally on all of these ETNs and ETFs. And it's just something that very few people know is happening, but it is happening underneath. So what happens when Barclays comes in and does this? They have suspended until further notice, further issuance of new shares. Well, now we have a real problem, don't we? Because if Barclays suspends share creation, the authorized participants can't do their job because there's nothing to match anymore. Barclays isn't creating shares and, and marking the value to the indicative. Well, now the whole thing breaks down. Essentially, the VXX, without this mechanism in place, now it's going to revert back to what all those people out there mistakenly think it should be, a supply and demand based product vast majority of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is not based on supply and demand. It is marked to a specific methodology and it functions very well. But with, <laughs> with Barclays messing around with the share creation, for whatever reason, again, like I said, I, I took a stab at it, I guessed, but who knows how close I am. Could be way off, I don't know. Whatever reason they did this, this whole thing has broken down. And now the VXX is essentially trading like a normal stock, based on supply and demand that you can't short. So what's gonna happen in that situation? Well, it's probably very likely gonna deviate substantially from its NAV value because there's nothing keeping it back now. Every time it bounces out of place, it gets dragged back. Well, not anymore. So this is what's happening. This is why I kinda wanted to go through all that just to make sure everybody knows that I'm not just you know, blowing off people's question when we say, oh, why is it spiking? Oh, it's because the share creation. There's a reason that share creation is so important and it's been happening behind the scenes. Probably almost nobody who trades these products even knows about that, but it is happening. And so yes, obviously major problem. Now we can go to 2012. The closest example we have, and like I said, this has actually happened um, sadly more than once, more than 10 times, more than, you know, it, it, it's not that uncommon to be honest for share creation to be stopped for various reasons. TVIX, everybody's, well, my nemesis, if you go on my YouTube channel, how many videos have I done warning people to be careful with TVIX? Um, but it happened, 2012, like I referenced before, they had internal controls where the fund, because the volatility space was super new back then, it was actually growing quite quickly. Assets under management were hitting red flags for them, so they halted the share creation. Seems like a legitimate reason to me, but more interestingly is what happened. So the NAV decoupled like we're seeing today with the VXX, but it actually lasted a month. The share creation was halted for almost a month and the NAV of the TVIX went at, at its peak about 90% above the indicative value. So remember I showed you how to calculate that. This is the VXX minus the VXX dot IV. Remember that you can track this now and post it on Twitter and look cool in front of your friends. But this chart, you can imagine, I mean, at, at the peak, that's actually pretty significant, 14.9. We're talking about um, something that is trading it, you know, before this, what, 25? What was it at? Yeah, like mid to high 20s, a 14 point above move. That's very significant. So TVIX, you can imagine, even went further than that. Now this has happened very quickly. It actually happened faster now, way, way faster this time around than it did with TVIX. But another interesting thing about this story of TVIX is what happened when they resolved it. And this is one of the things that I wanna warn people about when we get into how you should trade this or if you should trade this. When they finally resumed the shares, whether you think that all of this is manipulation and voodoo and it's magic behind the scenes and these are just bankers scamming us, whatever you think, Mark, you know, take my word for it, that NAV will very quickly go back to the indicative value. It's not gonna matter if the Wall Street bets people come on and they start dumping in volume here. It's not gonna matter how many of their friends get, get this thing going. This is not AMC. With AMC, you can actually, with enough volume, not that you're in total control, but you're in control, you have a little bit of momentum and you can push things around. This is not that. This is a situation where as soon as they resume share creation, remember those authorized participants get paid very well to do their job and they're gonna come in and fix this and it's not gonna take very long. So if it gets really, really high like it did with TVIX or 
Who knows if the army of Wall Street bets gets on this thing? Who knows how high it'll go? But the rug pull is coming. The only reason it wouldn't be coming is if there was serious structural problems at the bank, and for some reason, they're not going to reissue these shares. They're, they're going to scuttle the VXX, which I find unlikely because of how successful it is. So just know that that day is coming. You can just can't mark it on a calendar because we don't know what day it is, but two days from now, if this is just a minor issue, three weeks from now, if they have to find enough hedging and adequate premiums to get this thing functioning again, a month from now, I don't know when, but that day is coming. So just be aware of that. It happened with TVIX. The price went basically, I think this is 10 years ago, memory serves. It was something 1450 ish. That was the nav. The indicative value was all the way down at 750. So this thing made it, you know, almost 90% above that. And then rug pull. It went very, very quickly down. And it, they don't care. They're not going to warn you ahead of time. They're not going to help you out and give you a little wink nod and tell you, you know, we've got this thing almost solved. You better start resolving this. No, it's just going to be a day. So this is where I should mention, remember I said, I'm going to get back to this regulatory nonsense, this legal talk that they're going. I'll read you one thing. Because when this happens, believe me, people are going to lose money when this happens. So where is that line? Here we go. Issuer redemption. Listen carefully because a lot of people talk about lawsuits and, hey, they can't do this and that. They can't. Barclays Bank PLC will have the right to redeem or call the ETNs in whole but not in part at its sole discretion and without your consent on any trading day on or after the inception date until and including maturity. Trust me, they're not worrying about us and our money. They can either just rug pull like they did with TVIX back in the past and something like $300 million of capital is just poof. If you were long, sorry, it goes right back to the indicative value. They can just accelerate the product if they want to. They don't have to tell us ahead of time. They don't have to do any of that. So just be aware. The, the wide range of outcomes on this thing should give anybody pause. Again, I'm not telling you don't trade it, but please, please, please. If anything I'm saying today is surprising to you, might want to take a few steps back. If you don't know what an authorized participant is, if you don't know what share creation is, might want to say, mm, hold on a second, this might be a little more complicated than I thought. So now I'm just going to try to head off a few of the questions I'm expecting, rip through these really quick, and then we'll get to the open Q&A. So, so many UVXY traders out there, will this affect UVXY? So short answer is very likely no. There's absolutely no reason it should affect UVXY. It's a totally different product. UVXY is an ETF, but that doesn't matter. It's a different product and their share creation is not affected by this. So remember, everything has an indicative value. So you can just do UVXY minus UVXY dot IV and we can see it's functioning just fine. This might look like big ranges, but look, I mean, this is 0 0.04, 0 0.03. This is nothing. The, the UVXY is functioning perfectly fine, and there's no reason to expect it wouldn't. So that would answer the first question. Anybody who's worried about possible contagion leaking into something else, that's not how it works. These are all products that track an underlying methodology. And as long as the bank's doing their job creating and redeeming shares, and as long as the APs are out there doing their job, UVXY is just fine. Next question, what to do if you're already holding VXX? This is essentially directed at the, I don't know, 10,000 people who emailed me today asking me what they should do with their positions. So this is always tough for me. I apologize. I'm not registered to address anybody's personal investing situation. So I don't punt on the questions, but I do have to let you know that I, first of all, can't answer your specific questions legally. But secondly, even if I could, I'd still have to know the full structure of your portfolio. I'd have to know your risk tolerance. I'd have to know what your goal and your hypothesis for the trade was, you know, how it's going and where that's comparing and your follow-up plan in case it goes bad and your plan B and plan C. I don't know any of that. So unfortunately, if you're holding it and you're worried or if you're short it and you're losing, 
I can't be the guy who tells you, you know, here's what you do, you go sell that, or here's what you do, you, you buy the VXX, you short the UVXY, and you're going to make a lot of money. I can't do that. But um, what I can say is, if you're short, it's going to hurt, or it has hurt. And I'm sorry about that, because it's obviously nothing to do with you. You shorted something that they, this doesn't happen. I mean, it's never happened with VXX. This doesn't happen very often. So it's not your fault. You lost money. But obviously, if you're short, it, it's going to hurt. If you're long, the temptation would be to think that, you know, congratulations, high five, slam dunk, right? Got lucky. Just remember, it's not quite that cut and dry because, again, the gap down risk with this product, unless you've actually cashed in your VXX, if you're still holding it, you might be sitting on some nice gains, but you have to remember that that gap down risk is one announcement away. This isn't an issue with, okay, I'm going to hang on to it and see if everybody can keep pushing this higher. Again, in soon as those share creations are redeemed, and again, it could be a month, it could be a week, it could be before I get through this live stream, could be anything. There is that risk there. And then the acceleration clause that I also told you about, that's there. And what's important to tell you here, just a heads up, because I don't want people to be screaming, you know, hey, should we band together and sue these guys? If they, re you know, accelerate the product, which, like I said, very unlikely, it's VXX is awesome. No reason... I can think of that they wouldn't want to continue with this and fix the problem soon. But let's say they did. You have to be aware that you might think, okay, great, they just bought me out. I don't care. No. When they mark that down, it's going to mark to the indicative value. So if you're holding a product in the VXX, let's say it goes to 100, it goes to a crazy price, and the indicative value is 25. You might think, okay, they're going to buy me out at 100. They're not. They're actually going to mark that down to the indicative value at 25, and you're going to be just have all your profit taken from you. And imagine how bad that would hurt. That's why people talk about suing. That's why people talk about lawsuits. But again, they do not have to tell anybody that this is going to happen. They can just announce that it already has happened. They're saying, oh, you noticed your money's gone? Here's why. That's the announcement. So just be aware of that, that even if you're on the long side, you're not free and clear on this. You still have some decisions to make. I can't tell you to buy and take profit. I can't tell you to get out of your shorts and, and you know, take the loss. I can't do any of that, but I can make you aware of the risks. The third thing, third question I think people will want is are VXX options affected? The short answer is yes. Yes, the options are going to trade based on the VXX because that's what they're tracking. So if you want to see an example of the, v of the options working here, this is Thinkorswim. I'm sure your software, whatever it is, has some type of time machine or think back here and toss. If we go to VXX and we go back to Monday or last Friday, March 11th, and we just do a little mock-up trade here, you can see what's gonna happen. We just buy an at the money call, just for an example trading $26.50, $1.36. So let's say this person wants to do $1,000 and trading at $136, $136, don't fat finger that, seven contracts. So this person with their little seven contracts thinking they're trading 1,000 bucks, this trade is up $4,399 basically in two days. Yes, the VXX options are affected. If you wanna compare that, to the VIXY, which of course is supposed to be structurally identical in 99.9% .9 of the time, this person doesn't at the money call, same thing, they're paying $1.20 for this one. So they might be able to squeeze out an extra share, let's see in a second. 8.33, always round down because you can't buy partial option contracts, and this person's going to buy 8. Well, this person who used the VIXY they're up 20 bucks. This person's up 4,452. This person's up 20 bucks. So yes, bottom line, obviously the VXX options are going to be affected by this. Keep that in mind. Another thing that I will say is sometimes in these situations, people feel like they've suddenly learned something. And if I've taught you anything today, awesome. I, that's what I'm doing this for. 
But sometimes people feel like, okay, now I know something that other people don't know. Now I'm going to go into the options market and I'm actually going to make a bunch of money here. I know this thing's going up and I'm going to go buy those things. The problem is, and it's just a good baseline assumption, you should always assume the options market is both efficient and knowledgeable. We're not talking about unsophisticated traders here. First of all, options traders in general are probably more sophisticated. Just, I don't know if that's a blanket statement. Sorry if you're a stock trader, but there's a little bit more sophistication there. Then you drop down to volatility specific option trading and there's even more sophistication there. And then you drop into the option strings within the VXX, not dummies, right? You're competing against people who are pretty smart. They probably know everything that I went over today. So don't think that you have some huge edge because you've learned something today. If you wanna take a trade, great, but everything in the options market, remember, it's not about direction. It's about underpaying if you're long vol and selling things that are overvalued if you're short vol. It's not about jumping in and taking leveraged directional positions. So right now, volatility is extremely elevated in the VXX options market. So if you're gonna be jumping in and buying vol because you think you know, your VXX calls are gonna go up, they might, but they'll only make a profit if it goes up above and beyond the already high volatility that you're paying. Those contracts are insanely expensive right now. Remember, we did our live stream, it wasn't actually that long ago, where I did a live stream on fading the VIX, how to fade VIX spikes, episode 29. I went over the three best ways to fade the VIX and the three worst ways to fade the VIX. And among the three worst ways to fade the VIX when it spikes to 30 is to buy put options, right? It goes to 30, of course, everybody knows it's gonna go down. Let's buy put options and get rich. Well, you're paying an insane amount for those premiums up front, and you're not going to get rich. When the, VX, when the VIX goes down, you're going to actually struggle just to outpace and stay positive, to be honest. Sometimes the VIX will crash down 10 points, and you'll actually lose money on those, v, on those VIX puts. This is going to be the same situation. I want everybody to assume that you might be really smart, but just assume that everybody else is also pretty smart as well. So... Um, Make sure if you are trading it, you have a real edge, not just a, you know, I think it's gonna go up because Wall Street Bets is coming in. Remember, it has to go up by an amount that outpaces the crazy high vol that you paid for those contracts. So if I could recommend anything, going back to that Fade the VIX live stream, if you're gonna be doing options, why not do spreads that involve both a long and a short leg? At least you can take one of the variables off the table. So stick to verticals, butterflies, iron condors. Calendars are a little bit riskier. Diagonals a little riskier, but they're fine too. Um, stick to those because they have longs and shorts and you're kind of eliminating something off the board. Remember, options is just about basically eliminating variables and trying to control your own controllables. We, we can't control everything, but we can eliminate a few of those things that can surprise us. So stick to spreads. I would avoid buying long, long only high Vega options if I was you guys. Number four, of course, this is going to come up again. Are there arbitrage pairs trade opportunities? Yes and no. So here's where I'm going to throw on my conservative investor hat and remind you that risk is a double-edged sword. Of course, there is no reward without risk. We all have to risk something but it really depends how you're going to look at this. So if you're of the opinion that you can make a lot of money, let's say just baseline pairs trade, long VXX because you think it's gonna decouple from the NAV for the reasons we talked about, short VIXY because you wanna cover a little bit of your bases maybe. It would be very similar to say you hated Apple stock, for example, you think it's garbage. I know you don't, but everybody loves Apple. I'm an Apple fanboy. everything I've got is Apple. I should have said Tesla. Um, I'm a Corvette guy, so Tesla's hard to get my head around. But yeah, let's say you hate Apple, it's garbage. You want to short Apple, but you know that it's risky. So what you could do, because Apple represents about 12% of the NASDAQ index, you could go out and you could buy the NASDAQ and you could short the Apple and kind of play them off each other as a pairs trade. You could do the same thing with VXX and VIXY. But the problem is, how are you looking at this trade? On the one hand, there is upside. There could be arbitrage there because the VXX could very, very likely, oh, I don't want to say very likely. I should not have said that. Now everybody's going to say, 
they're going to log off the live stream and immediately go buy their long calls. Um, it, it's certainly possible that the NAV decouples more than it already has. But remember, there's a rug pull waiting out there. So depending on what side of this you're looking at it, you could say, on the one hand, there's plenty of profit to be made. A lot of reward out there. On the other hand, there's a lot of risk because you're starting your trade where there's a massive decoupling already. If you do the Apple and NASDAQ pairs trade, you're starting at zero, right? If I, one of my strategies is actually fairly close to going long vol, we're about 1% away from that threshold. So if I go long volatility, say tomorrow, I'm starting at a zero line. I'm gonna buy the VIXM and I'm starting at a zero line. If you take any type of arbitrage pairs trade initiated now, you got to remember that the, the VXX is actually at the indicative value. It's just not there now because the shares have been halted. Actually, there was halts today. Not halted, but the creation has been suspended. But when that announcement comes, it's going to go back. So conservative investor looks at that and says, well, I mean, there's a ton of risk there. You're, you're getting into something where you're already potentially 20% down on that trade. Why would you do that? The other person might look at it and say, hey, that's, that's the way I like to trade. I like to live on the edge. So just know that th this is not easy. That you, you can look at it in all these ways. Some people might be just chomping at the bit, ready to go long this thing and cash in all their profits. Other people might be wanting to get aggressive because they know there's a good short opportunity here. When this announcement comes, I mean, obviously the VXX is going to quickly retreat. And so what side of the trade are you on? Th this is not cut and dry. And this is not easy to structure something that you can get into that everybody wants to make their big money, but you can't make big money without taking big risk. And there's just no way to structure a trade right now that, that gets one without the other. You're going to have to take both of them, unfortunately. So I can tell you for me, all of my investments are significant portions of my net worth. So I don't play with these things. I don't, I don't take risks and risk all that I've built up. So aside from maybe a few trades, I mean, maybe we'll do a live stream and I'll open up a couple of fun things, but nothing significant of my money is going to go into this. But if you do, um, be careful. Make sure you understand everything I said. And... Yeah. Have fun. Like I said, don't over leverage. Always defined risk. Everybody who knows me knows I've been harping on the fact that you don't ever sell naked calls on volatility ETPs. You just don't ever, 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 ever under no circumstances, full stop. That's it. You just don't do it. Buy the throwaway out of the money just to avoid that. First of all, obviously that re reduces your capital expenditure and it's just a far more efficient trade, but I'll just cap the outside loss. Just buy that throwaway. Make sure you define everything. Um, that's what I would say. Don't do anything stupid. Okay. So how long did we go for? All right. That was way too long. Sorry about that, but uh, let's do a Q and A. And then, like I said, if, if we have to come back and just do a pure Q and A session next time, that might be fun. We can get into more of these. Let's just do a quick market review here because that took about 40 minutes to go through. What has happened? Nothing. It's still 18. Remember, just to recap, if you want to know how this thing is going, just get used to doing VI VIXX minus VXX.IV. This is the one you want to be looking for, right? How far above its indicative value, basically how big the potential rug pull is going to be when this finally happens. I'm going to get used to looking at that. Okay. Let's check out some of these questions. First of all, if everybody could just do the stupid stuff. I know I hate asking, but let's trick YouTube into thinking I'm really popular, even though I'm not. So give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, obviously, but uh, just since you're sitting here, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. My business partner's over here. She's helping out. So give both of us a like if you would be so kind. Okay. All right, Winston, besides UVXY, what are the alternatives to VXX similar in behavior? So the volatility landscape has diminished substantially in the last three years. So there are other things, but oftentimes they don't have a whole lot of volume. So what I would say 
is you are looking at, you're going to cringe when I say this, but VXX is still a good product. I know people are going to be like, I'm never touching this thing again. It's fine. Well, as soon as the shares resume, there's nothing... Aside from a few lingering mental problems with this, there really shouldn't be any hang up. So VXX is a one times long product, obviously put that on your list, but it is an ETN. So there's tax treatments going to be a little bit different. VIXY, which is the one times ETF. So that's on there. UVXY since February 27th was deleveraged. It used to be a two times product that I used to make videos telling everybody how stupid it is. It's 1.5 these days. So Still kind of half dumb, but you don't need that kind of leverage if you don't really know what you're doing. But uh, there's those three. And that's pretty much, I mean, for me and my community, I absolutely love the midterm products. When I say midterm, I am talking about your M4 to M7 on the VIX futures. So of course, these products trade the M1 and M2, like I explained. I like the ones that focus out here. That's your VIXM and your VXZ. Unfortunately, the volume's a little low, so it freaks people out. But as we've explained, share creation and APs, it, it functions a little bit differently than a normal ETF and an ETN. So you don't have to be as worried about low volume, but it is very low. I mean, I'm kind of in a hard minority there loving those products. But I would say those three for sure, and then go ahead and throw VIXM and VXZ on there. And please, everybody, dive in and start trading them because it would be such a shame if we lost those as well. We lost the ZIV, which was my favorite product. I, I don't want to lose the VIXM, so whatever I can do. SVXY is a 0.5 inverse, which we trade as well, but I think your question was more mimicking longs. So yeah, pretty, pretty limited options, but to be honest, the because they're all functioning in the literal exact same methodology, all you're really looking for is to max the tax structure and whatever your broker allows you to trade. Just go with that one. They're all the same functioning. The methodology, even for UVXY, it's 1.5, but it's still, it's the exact same methodology of tracking the futures and whatnot. So um, those are your options. And there is that SVIX kicking around that it's kind of threatening to launch, but I did a video on that thing in 2019. It's been over two years that thing hasn't launched, so I'm no longer confident that it's going to. I, there's been too many delays. I don't know what's going on with that, but that will be a minus one times inverse like the old XIV. And then rumor has it they're also doing a UVIX, which is a two times basic TVIX replacement, which I don't care about. I could leave that one for sure. Okay. Sorry if I answered some of these already in my long spiel there, but I just, I always go to the top of the comment section and I just bang out as many as I can here. I guess the reason Barclays suspends VXX is because they foresee VIX is going to spike big soon. So that means the Fed will not save the day. I don't know if that's serious or not, but I always have to assume that it is. So no, that's not the reason. The VXX has nothing to do with the VIX spiking. They have a set methodology, like I said, the SPVIX STR index has been functioning long before Volpocalypse, and it just is what it is. That's the functioning of it. They didn't, they didn't suspend it because of that. No. If that were to happen, to be honest, they would probably want VXX functioning smoothly so they could take advantage of that. They love fees, and the more people that buy it, the larger the AUM gets, the more money they make. So it would be actually in their best interest to make sure this thing is perfectly functional when they get those big VIX spikes. So, but if you were joking, sorry, I went on that spiel. <clears throat> oh my God, the sky is falling. It sure feels like it. It's just, what a bizarre thing. And it's actually, it's just been amazing on social media too. I don't know what platform you followed me on, whether it's LinkedIn or I post my, my thing on Facebook. I hate Facebook, but I, I post my links on there. So if you want to follow me, Actually, it's right there on the screen, at Volatility Vix. Follow me on Twitter. It's really the only social media that I'm active on. YouTube, social media, that's it. But yeah, it was, it was awesome. Everybody's, so many of the, like the OGs of the volatility space, the people that, you know, I used to read their stuff back in the day. And, you know, Bill Luby at Vix and More. Um, I, I want to get that right. I think there's a blog spot someday. 
Mix and more. Is it at Blogspot or is it just? Yeah. So Vix and more, the words, V-I-X-A-N-D-M-O-R-E dot blogspot.com. And of course on Twitter, let me get this right. Cause uh, he's one of the people, I mean, I don't think anybody wrote more about the old T-Vix crash than Bill Luby did. So make sure you follow him. It's at Vix and more. I'm just going to click his profile here. Joined in 2007. So super OG of the vol space. Uh, give him a follow as well. But it was really cool seeing everybody chime in on what, what the hell's going on here. And it'll be even more fun if this thing lasts for a while and we can actually start structuring some small defined risk, but fun trades. That'll be cool. Uh-oh. Again, I don't know if you're joking or not, but please don't be doing TA on vol ETPs. Please no. And that is rude. Don't do that. We'll just say she's doing yoga. She's not, she's not being rude. Yeah, uh, TA on volatility ETPs, not good because as I went way long on my explanation, supply and demand has nothing to do with these products. So I mean, now it does, of course, but 99.9% .9 of the time, I mean, you're drawing lines and doing your TA and whatever type of TA you're doing, I know there's more than just drawing lines, but um, no. No, it's just front two month VIX futures. That's, that's it. That's all you got. And I mean, think about it. Obviously, when you look at a chart of the VXX, let's say you actually are trying to draw support and resistance lines, for example, and you draw a line six months apart. Well, the VXX today is not the same product it was six months ago. The VIX futures that caused those price movements are entirely different VIX futures. They are gone. They've dropped off the board and they can never come back and influence the product again. This isn't like Apple stock that you might see it go through phases and cycles and seasonality. Maybe you can draw resistance because it's supply and demand. The VXX literally, the underlying futures roll through the VIX futures cycle and then expire and disappear forever. So if you've ever seen a chart of the VXX on a long term, you know, hide the children. It's pretty ugly, but this is what it looks like. This is the VXX. Now, it doesn't matter. I mean, you could draw all the lines you want on this stupid thing. The VIX futures that caused all of these movements to go down are gone forever. This thing could never get back to a previous price. Impossible. Totally impossible. So please know. Again, if you were joking, I don't have much of a sense of humor. So I'm I just assume everybody's being dead serious when they ask stuff. Is there a way to get the intrinsic value of VXX? Yes, but I'm going to review this again. I'm sure people saw it again. So the first way, I know a lot of people, I, and I do it as well. Sometimes I get, you post something from Yahoo Finance and people are like, oh, you're such a noob trader. You use Yahoo Finance. I think it's just convenient. So on Yahoo, you do this, um, oh, my brain just blanked, whatever that stupid thing is. Um, you, you do one of those and then you just do VXX dash IV and you're gonna get the indicative value. So you can see it's 2634 and the real VXX is trading at 3367. So indicative value or intraday indicative value, it's available for anything. So you could do uh, SPY dot IV and you can get the indicative value of the SPY. If you're trading the utilities ETF, like we often do, you could get it for the XLU.IV. These exist for everything. And you can always see, how can you tell I've been shopping for watches? Um, every time you see that, you can see how far away it deviates. And like I explained, almost certainly it's tracking very, very well because, hey, if they ask me to be an authorized participant in some bizarro world, I'm taking the money too. Like they're basically saying here, there's a difference between the nav and the indicative. Do you want your money? Yes, please. I like money. So they track pretty close. Trying to cut down on the coffee. Then bourbon, like I said, that solves your problem for you. This is rough. Sorry, Joseph. Got really hosed today. Bad on me all around, but I mean, we can trust UVXY now. Yes. As far as you can trust UVXY, I mean, I'm not making any claims that, yeah, oh, no problem, everybody pour into that. It has all of its issues on its own. So obviously, 
best practices risk management keep that tight because it's leveraged it's complicated and most people get crushed that try to trade it so be careful but yes the uvxy is functioning perfectly normally <clears throat> during this call sipping bourbon that would have been a good idea yeah sorry but it's never too late <laughs> i know you're joking but in all seriousness one thing I often remind people of is always wait for confirmation of signals and always fully digest your, your trading plans before doing it. So even, again, you're joking, but I'm saying for most other people, you don't need to rush out and, and start trading this thing. You really don't. You can, you can let it go entirely. You can just sit on your hands and let it go. You don't have to swing at every pitch. Or you can be slow and dip a toe and wade in slowly and formulate a plan. Believe me, you don't have to just race out and throw on all your positions now. So depending on what the reason that Barclays did this is, that will dictate how fast this happens. But I suspect it'll either be a one to two day issue. Like I said, if it was just some type of stupid regulatory slip up behind the scenes, maybe they could fix it quick. If if it's what I said about the futures and the fact that they probably haven't fully aligned their hedging and they're having difficulties getting premiums that they like and they, they don't mind paying, it could be, be three weeks or something. So we'll see. Assume you've got time. Yeah. Okay. I've always disagreed with the idea that the price of VXX is determined only by the M1 and M2 VIX futures. I think the action that week proves that. It's an ETN, not an ETF. Um, I know. I know it's very hard for people to accept, but it is the case. If you go look at the underlying SPVIX STR index, this is the VXX. It is almost identical to the VXX going back as far as you want to go. This is the VXX. I don't know what else to tell people. It is factually true that the volatility ETPs track their methodology and they do it very well for the most part. Yes, TVX decoupled 90% in 2012. UGAS was crazy. D DGAS, what was that one? It was up 25,000% or something crazy. Yes, it can happen. But like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, they will function based on that. And it is just a fact. I know it's hard for people to accept because... It's such an outlier in the trading world. I mean, what kind of, what kind of voodoo is it that it, you can have a whole bunch of people buy it and it doesn't change price? That doesn't make any sense. Well, share creation and authorized participants make sure that it makes sense. It is, it is that way. So always trade the market that we have, not the one we want. Trade the products as they are, not how we want them to be. These are just the, you know, the standard things. And you can make money trading these products. I mean, I've, I've been doing it and I've been doing it responsibly for a long time, 10 years at least in the volatility products and another seven on top of that in the options space. It can be done, but step one is analyzing reality and understanding how they move and then I mean, that's one of, the, one of the fundamental reasons we love VXX trading so much is because it is a methodology that allows us to calculate things. It's quant-based. We're not guessing here. I mean, Apple stock, I mean, sure, there are people who they might do their discounted cash flow models or whatever they do, but the VXX, we can actually not predict, but we can, we can understand the, the foundation of the volatility complex that causes those future the fixed futures price movements. And so the VXX gives us that opportunity to be very specific with our models, far more than other products. So to take that away from it and say, oh, I don't believe that, and it's definitely supply and demand, and I'm gonna do technical analysis on it, I think people are missing the point. You're, you're missing the, the golden opportunity to analyze what's actually under the hood here. This is a gift that it functions not on a formula, but on a, basically on a set methodology. It's awesome. You know, so 
don't discount that. In, embrace it and figure out what's going on. Yeah, I saw that. VXX was halted several times. Again, I, I could be wrong. I didn't dive into it. I was kind of preparing things here, but it's probably just because it violated some volatility movements. I, I don't think, again, I, I wouldn't read too much into it. It's probably fairly normal. It was up a lot, and I, I don't know if they have models like that. I'm, I guess I'm probably glad that they, they're at least still trying to save this thing. If this is directed at me, no, I didn't participate in any of those, and I don't participate in crypto. I, I don't mind playing around with a single Bitcoin. Just, I'm kind of just seeing if I can actively trade a Bitcoin, um, one Bitcoin. If I can actively trade it and make more than what would have been a buy and hold on Bitcoin, just kind of for fun, just playing around. But no, I'm not. If that was directed at me, no. But I support, I don't support them, but I think it's kind of cool. I, I get the cause, you know, sticking it to the man. I think it's funny. I think, I think a lot of them are walking into a buzzsaw with this one. I might actually even do a video, just attention Wall Street bets. This is not AMC. I mean, when, when they release the, the share creation mechanism kicks back into play, these Wall Street bets people are going to be wondering, well, what's going on? We, we're crushing this thing with volume. We're hitting the shorts. We're doing it. doesn't matter. It's not going to matter. This is not AMC. This is not, it's going to, it could work for a while. As long as the share creation is halted, I'm curious to see how far they can push this. But yeah, the, <laughs> the music will stop and they will, and a lot of them will be without a chair when the music stops, if you get the analogy. With 10% plus inflation, revenues and profits will print higher numbers in the coming quarters. Oh, that's... Go ahead and talk amongst yourselves. For me, it's hard to keep up with it all, so I typically... I'm trying to find comments that... that I can... that jump out at me. If anybody's curious, you can always ask off-topic stuff. I don't mind. I'm an open book. I think there's a lot of crosstalk. Buddy, do you do this for a living or not? I'm gonna assume you're not talking about me. Who are you arguing with? Don't argue in the comment section. I mean, you can if you want, but yeah. I actually do have three rules though, so nobody's violated it. I don't delete comments. I don't do any of that stuff. You can insult me all you want. You can call me all kinds of names if you want. I won't ban you or delete you or anything like that. But don't insult other people because I want it to be a community where I, I, people feel welcomed and they can ask dumb questions and not get yelled at. I mean, we all have dumb questions. And when I don't understand something, I'm, I don't mind asking dumb questions. I'm not dumb. So it's go ahead and ask your dumb questions. I assume you're not dumb either. So we don't insult other people and uh, we don't use profanity because that will get blocked on YouTube. I'm not a prude or anything, but you know, YouTube algorithm. And then lastly, third party links. Don't, don't link me to your, you know, crypto.com, whatever thing. I'm not interested in that. But other than that, go for it. This is interesting. I tried, I just researched for like two minutes. I wouldn't even call it research. I basically just Googled a couple of things. As far as I can find about the current outstanding short interest, I have no idea whether this is even trustworthy number, but 53% seems to be kind of in the ballpark of what I found. Um, I'll dig further because that is rather important. So yeah, we'll see. Short selling VIXY or UVXY as a hedge to long VXX is risky. Example, Volmageddon. Well, it's all risky. Everything has risk. Yeah, short selling VIXY, it, it violates what I always tell people. Don't ever take undefined risk trades ever period, but certainly on volatility products. I mean, why would anybody do that when the options world allows us a myriad of ways to take defined risk trades with lower capital outlay, by the way, so you can actually even make more money by taking less risk. I don't know why anybody sells naked short calls, cost a fortune in capital, and obviously, it, eventually, they're going to blow up. It's just a silly trade. It's, 
it always strikes me as somebody who kind of nothing wrong with being a new trader. We all started at the same place. I was a new trader too at, at one point, and I had some bumps and bruises along the way, believe me. But it just strikes me as kind of a rookie trade when people are doing that. And the same thing for selling selling short the ETFs, like shorting, borrowing shares and shorting UVXY or VIXY or whatever. It just strikes me as a little bit not very well planned out, not a very good understanding of how important efficient use of capital is. It's just not a good way to take a short ball position. Okay. Huh. Should we buy puts on the VXX right now? So I don't know how much you listen to, but I kind of covered that a little bit. You should never really buy puts on anything when volatility is high because you're walking into a, a Vega headwind there, right? You're, you're paying the premium because volatility is so high. And then when it does go down, you're risking not outpacing that movement. So you might get it delta wise directionally correct, but your Vega is just not going to, it's just, it's going to hurt. I mean, when that crashes down, yeah, that's going to hurt you more than the delta benefits you. So no, you shouldn't do that for anything, but I can't comment on how directional you should go. But if you do do it, verticals, butterflies, condors, you know, spreads. Efficient spreads. That's interesting. It will reissue around next Wednesday based on my source. Got a source? Not saying you're wrong, but I've, I'd be shocked if they would mention that. So, I mean, unless your source is literally the CEO, I, I don't think that's reliable information. I can't imagine they're going to tell, they're going to leak this at all when they're going to resume shares. That would be really, really out of character for these types of situations. So I don't think we're going to get any warning. It's just going to be, you're going to log on Twitter one day and somebody you follow is going to have found the, the article and you're going to see, oh, they've resumed share creation. Then you're going to race to your Thinkorswim platform and you're going to check. Sure enough, you're going to watch the VXX come tumbling back down towards the indicative value. But I don't think they're going to give us any heads up on that. I don't get invited to the scotch and cigar meetings, so I, I got nothing for you. I have no idea when they're going to do that. I probably do a live stream on this. What strategy can be used to capitalize on VXX news? It's not going to be a high probability strategy regardless, because of course, like I've been saying, this thing could balloon way over the nav or way over the IV for as long as it lasts, and then it can get rug pulled. So essentially what you're trying to do is dance on that knife edge between trying to get a little bit of profit and seeing how long you can ride it without waiting that, you know, one second too long when that announcement finally hits. Walk in a tightrope. Yeah, thanks for coming out. I, I did see your email just at the last minute before I logged in. So thanks for that note. Glad you could check out at least some of it. All the live streams are always on the YouTube channel. So go ahead and watch the re rebroadcast. And I'll probably, like I said, we might do more trades about this. If it lasts a while, we might do open Q and A's. I, people have a million questions, right? Thank you for doing this today. It's much appreciated. You're welcome, Tim. Thanks for joining. Uh -huh. Who are you laughing at? Make friends in the comment section. No arguing. <laughs> what is this? I'll give it back. Not trying to steal his customer. Um, I don't know if that means you also do something similar to me. Like, if, are you also either an asset manager or you have a subscription service? Um, I don't mind. My basic rule on this, people, a lot of so-called competitors will come into my live streams. Everybody's welcome. My rule on that, I, I'm never competitive with people who are genuinely trying to help. So if you're out there, that's my baseline. I don't look at people, oh, they're a fraud, they don't know what they're doing, and this person, how dare they? It's very simple for me. If you're genuinely trying to help people, there's 
room for everybody in this business. There's more money than any of us know what to do with. So there's more clients out there. We don't have to worry about competing with each other. If somebody else runs a competing volatility strategy to me, I don't, you know, I don't care. You can come in the live stream. We can still be friends as long as we're all trying to help. So if you are, here's, here's the people that follow my strategy. You go ahead and tell them what you're all about. No third-party advertisements, though. I don't care about your crypto stuff. I don't want to buy your NFTs if that's, if that's what you're doing. They decided to halt the same week Fed comes out. Not a coincidence. Eh. Eh. Nah, that's not what's happening. I understand the sentiment, though. I mean, I understand there's just, just years and years and layers of distrust here that we're working with. So I, I'm not even going to try to unpack and correct you on that one. It's, it's not that. I mean, this is not... It's just... I don't want to say normal because it's so not normal, but it's not intentionally fraudulent. That's not what's happening here. There's no timing thing like, well, we, we, we don't want the VXX trading when the Fed raises interest rates. It has nothing to do with that, trust me. Yep, this is, this is good. I like this. Legging into a small put spread. Good luck. I think that's the way to do it. Dip a toe because this is a lot of fun and you can actually learn a lot. Even if we lose a little bit of money in the process, even if the trades that I decide to do, the little fun trades, even if they lose money, they're always learning processes. So good luck. Why did the VX guess go up and not down when they stopped issuing new shares? Why wouldn't people just buy VIXY if they want long vol? Well, you could, but I, I think that would be normal. I mean, buy the VIXY. If, if your bias before all this mess with VXX happened was to buy long vol now, then buy the VIXY. Because like I said, if you do buy the VXX instead, you might get that additional pop, but you are starting from a, a entry price that is significantly above the indicative. So boy, you're, you're opening yourself up to additional losses. Like I said, if I buy long vol, say tomorrow, if I get that signal, I do mine daily. So if I get it tomorrow, I'm starting at zero profit with the VIXM, and that's the trade. I'm not going to stuff in the VXX so I can get a little bit of potentially extra juice. I'm just going to stick to my models as if none of this happened. And I'm going to take separate trades and maybe play around a little bit. But again, just, just for fun. They will be very small portions of capital. If VXX is redeemed, will that impact your strategies? No, it won't. Um, I tend not to answer questions specific to the community. I don't want my live streams to feel like I'm doing an advertisement. Obviously, we have a community and people can join if they like. I can even probably, probably drop a subscribe thing there. But no, it doesn't affect us because what we're going to have to do, I do trade VXX butterfly options within the vol trend strategy for our community we're going to have to switch to UVXY until this gets resolved. And like I said, emotionally, it's gonna be a little bit tough to assume VXX is fixed when it is fixed, but it will kind of be fixed. If the share creations get back to normal, we're just gonna to have to get over our emotional baggage, our, you know, oh, my brain blocked out again, PTSD? Post-traumatic stress. Yeah, that's the one. That's funny. Sometimes on a live stream, you forget the simplest words. Yeah, we're just going to have to forget that and just assume that it's functioning normally. So the VXX might be back on the table in a few months. But yes, for the time being, if I do initiate a new trade, I'll just be flipping over to UVXY. It's basically the same thing. Why the love for VIXM? It moves slower. The Midterm M4 to M7 futures don't react so quickly to market movements. It's less jittery. So what ends up happening, of course, there's less potential for profit. There's always two ways to look at everything. There's less potential for outsized profit, but there's also a little bit of built-in risk management and a little bit of margin for error built in there. And going long volatility is extremely difficult to profit from. It's not that hard to make profit upfront, like early on, but it's very difficult to know when to cash out and hang on to it. That's 
everybody thinks, oh, long vol is so hard. It's so hard to time volatility. It's really not if you wait for the volatility markets to depress to a certain level. There's a pretty good chance there's going to be some follow through and you can make some initial profit. The really difficult part is keeping that money on the other side when you get the big buy the dip, some crazy good piece of news, the market shoots upwards, there's mass vol crush, and you give back a lot of your long vol profit. So the VIXM just kind of gives me a little bit of margin for error. I just like it more. I just like how those midterms trade, more consistent. Those front months, every, I mean, they're very, very ultra sensitive. It's like if you look at the cash VIX term structure, the VIX, the VIX 9D, the 9-day, the VIX, the VIX 3M, the VIX 6M, that range, the VIX 9D is ultra sensitive. Of course, it's the 9-day VIX. Sort of the same thing happening with those VXX, UVXY. Front two months is going to react strongly. So there's a lot of false positive signals. Sometimes you get a big signal, you make a move, and the very next day it reverses. Actually takes a couple days for the midterm futures to adjust like that. So I just like them more. It matches my personality. Not saying other people have to, but for me, absolutely. I, I would do nothing but those midterm futures. If we had ZIV and a couple competitors as well, because we've got multiple vol strategies, I'd just sub in all those midterm ones and I, I wouldn't trade the front month um, ones. Who's your favorite golfer right now? My wife, um, Vanessa. I haven't golfed in years. I, don't, I haven't even watched golf. I, I have no idea who's good anymore. It's weird, right? I used to be a professional golfer. I spent 20 years of my life just immersed in golf. Everything about my life was golf. And then 2005, basically retired, injuries, all that stuff. And since then, I've, I haven't really played much golf. I've probably played 30 times in the last 17. I retired 17 years ago. I probably played 40 rounds of golf in that time period. So... My favorite golfer right now is my wife because she just started last year and she's getting good and she's real excited. And it reminds me of how I used to feel about golf. Like she's always into, she wants the new equipment. Like if you look at my bag, I don't really care. I have the new driver, which I haven't even hit yet, but I, I use old clubs and old clothes and I, I don't care. But she's kind of in that phase where she's still learning. So it's a lot of fun. Well, Barclays will certainly get sued. I imagine they won't. There's, there's really very little recourse to sue them. This is all very clearly labeled in the prospectus and all their, all their legal jargon in there. They, they make sure they cover their bases. They're not doing anything illegal. Um, like I said, like I showed, I can do it again if you were late showing up. But they, they make very, very clear to spell things out. Like, we can at our sole discretion without your consent or any trading day on or after inception, they can accelerate the product. They can halt suspension of shares. Like look at the time of this, 9.13. This announcement happened 17 minutes before they halted the shares, right? And basically in pre-market, it's already trading. So they didn't give any warning. They didn't give any heads up. They don't need to. Do not expect any recourse if you lose money here. So don't lose money. Make sure you know what you're trading. Understand your product and you won't lose money. But uh, no, don't, don't think that they're doing something like that. They're really not. I'm not happy about it. I'm not trying to defend them at all. But no, it's just one of those things. We'll have to wait and see if we ever get the backstory on why they actually had to do this or not. I don't know if we'll ever know. So have you tried golf on VR? It would be awesome. Get every... No, no, I haven't. When I was in Dubai last month, it did seem like they had some pretty cool stuff over there. But since my back was so hurt, I didn't do any of it. But next time I'll check it out. Dubai's like 20, seems like about 20 years in the future. So if, if it exists anywhere, it exists there for sure. All right. So how about we leave it there? Lot to digest. Let's do a market recap for everybody, just in case something horrible happened while I was speaking. The market is, S&P 500 is up a percent. 
I'm in gold, which is painful. Eh, it's come back a little bit. Gold was just rocking for the last month for us, and we, I was just loving it. And then in the last five days, it's been hard to watch. We are in the real estate ETF, so that is flat. That's not, not great. And that's it. So VXX minus VIXY. Remember, VIX, these two should be materially identical. You can see it should be tracking this line basically indefinitely forever and ugly. So that's how high we are. Let's see if things start heating up in the future. So I will be back for sure. This is not a topic that's going to go away quickly. Thanks everybody for dropping in and might do one later this week. So stay tuned for that. Have a good night, everyone.